Hi y'all and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about something pretty fun, or at least I think it's pretty fun. So y'all already know that I love antique shopping and vintage fashion and all that stuff, right? Well, one thing you may not know about me is I also love gaming. Yes, like so many other people in the world, I enjoy relaxing at the end of a long day by exploring new worlds, uncovering thrilling stories, and of course, shooting down countless waves of enemy grunts. It all started when I was little, and my family and I would play Mario Kart on the Nintendo 64. Even before I was really old enough to play, I would be on my dad's team, which really just meant I got to pick a character, which was always Princess Peach. Then when I was a little older and my brother got a PS2, I would spend countless hours watching him play Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy X. And eventually, I got my chance to play and was immediately hooked. Video games offer an immersive and interactive experience that make you feel like you've accomplished something amazing right from your living room. Whether you're a casual gamer or enjoy something a little more challenging, video games offer something truly special that have captured the minds of millions since the birth of the medium and shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. So I'd like to take this opportunity to combine two of my favorite things, costumes in video games. Now, when discussing costumes in video games, you really can't talk about costume without also talking about graphics. Since the amount of detail a costume can have is entirely dependent on the capability of the graphics at the time. So I'm going to try to give a quick rundown of the history of video game graphics. Now a little disclaimer here, I'm not the most technically inclined person, so I'm going to try my best here, but if I get something wrong, then I'm sorry. So let's dive in. Going back to the very beginning of video games is kind of a tricky thing to do, since there isn't even really a consensus on what the first video game even was. Before researching for this video, I believed, like so many others, that Pong from 1972 was the first video game. But Pong wasn't even the first game made by the developers. In 1971, this same team made Computer Space, a game in which the player controls a little spaceship and shoots down enemy ships. So was that the first video game then? While it is considered to be the first commercially available video game, it still wasn't the first. In fact, it wasn't even the first game about fighting in space. In 1962, we get Space War, which was developed by Steve Russell at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The program was never actually intended to be released to the public, though that didn't stop others at the school from making copies of their own. But it goes back even farther than that to Tennis for Two, which was put on display in 1958 at the Brookhaven National Laboratory. This was part of an effort to try to make the locals feel a little bit more comfortable about having a nuclear research facility nearby. Atomic fallout? Don't, don't even worry about it. Look over here, we have computer tennis. There's no problem here, just don't even worry about it. But the further back you go, the more programs and prototypes you find that could technically qualify as the first video game. You could go down that rabbit hole for hours, but at some point you have to ask yourself, what qualifies as a video game? Do prototypes and patents that were never actually run count? And what about intent? Was it made to be enjoyed as a video game? But I'm not really gonna dive into all that because none of that really has anything to do with costume in video game, which is supposed to be the point of this video. And don't worry, we're getting back to that. Most of these early games either didn't have characters or had the player represented by an inanimate object, like a spaceship or tank, none of which wear costumes. So then the search begins for the first video game character. I've heard the argument that Pong is technically the first video game character since those lines represent the player but you could just as easily make the argument that it represents the racket rather than the player. Either way, they are distinctly lacking in any uh, humanoid shape, so we're gonna move on. Since the study of video game history is a relatively new field of research, there hasn't been a whole lot of research done on this specific topic. So to try to find the answer, I had to dig through every early video game I could find that had a humanoid avatar and compare the dates to try to figure out which one was the oldest. Then after many hours of digging and reading and watching gameplay videos, it came down to two games, Western Gun and D&D. Sounds like it should be easy from here, right? But of course, it wasn't that simple. Both of these games had earlier versions, so I had to figure out which one was the earliest. 
Western Gun was originally released in 1975 in Japan, but was later renamed to Gunfight for Western audiences. The game features two dueling cowboys in a Wild West setting. D&D, on the other hand, is an adaptation of the famous tabletop game Dungeons & Dragons. It was also released in 1975 and features this little night guy. Look how cute he is! I love him! But there was an earlier version of this game known as... Pedit 5? P-E-D-I-T 5? I'm not really sure what the correct way to say it is, but this. I found a blog post on the Wayback Machine that claimed to contain an email from one of the game's creators, which said that this version of the game was created in the fall of 1975. So I still wasn't able to discover a definite answer as to which one of these were the first. Until more information is uncovered, these two will just have to share the title of first costume video game characters. Though both are based on historical fashions, which of course is my favorite. But if any of y'all have more information on when these games were released, which ones came out first, if I missed a whole other game entirely, please let me know in the comments below. Though the technology of the time definitely limits the amount of detail they can show in the costumes, we can still see in both of these distinct elements of clothing. Even though the sprite is basically just a silhouette, we can still tell that he's wearing spurs, a holster, and a 10-gallon hat. While the knight isn't a silhouette, he still doesn't have much more detail. But we can still clearly make out his helmet, sword, and shield with coat of arms. So if they were the first, let's take a look further down the timeline and see how graphics and video games led to more detailed costume designs. Most people, when they think of old video games, think of 8-bit graphics and pixel art. Though pixels weren't the only game in town. Vector graphics were used in games as early as Tennis for Two and offered a smoother look to its shapes and polygons. Vector graphics were even used in Star Wars during the Death Star briefing. But the line-based nature of vector graphics weren't quite as workable and versatile as raster. So in the end, for the most part, the pixel won out. And as technology evolved and more and more pixels were introduced, the character and costume design slowly began to gain more detail, particularly in fighting games, where the sprites tended to be larger because they were the focus instead of the background and environments. But even in this early era of video games, some truly iconic costume designs would emerge, and many would continue to evolve over time. This era also included some beautiful pixel art that people still try to mimic to this day. Though most graphics were still limited by the solid flat pixel that made up the images, there were a few exceptions. Probably the most well-known of these was 1983's Dragon's Lair, which used laser disc technology to basically make an interactive movie. This game was animated by the legendary Don Bluth, the mastermind behind such movies as An American Tale, Anastasia, and The Land Before Time. So obviously, these characters' costumes could be much more detailed than their pixel art counterparts. It just depends on how much the animator feels like drawing over and over and over again. While the game was groundbreaking for its time, it's not nearly as interactive as other games from the same era. It reminds me more of those mini-games you find on DVDs from the early 2000s. You know the ones where you mostly just watch something happen and occasionally click a button to continue the story. But the real game changer was the arrival of 3D graphics. The first use of 3D graphics was in 1980's Battlezone but it was limited by its outline-based vector graphics. Other games such as Star Wars in 1983 would follow suit and even mimic the look of the briefing from the film. But when they eventually figured out how to fill in those outlines, it gave the world a much more grounded feel. 1984's iRobot was the first game to utilize this technique, but it didn't sell particularly well, so it took a while for the style to really catch on, and mostly with flight and driving simulators. Some games only used this technique in the background world, but kept the 2D sprites, such as 1992's Mario Kart. Or some did the opposite, such as 1992's Alone in the Dark, where the backgrounds are drawn, but the characters are polygonal. The characters made using this technique weren't nearly as detailed as the characters made using pixel art. And so these characters' costumes tended to be extremely simple. But at least we also get some pretty pixel art versions that look much better. The huge amount of computing power needed to run these games also limited the amount of detail they could put in the costumes, which is why many of these games only use partially 3D graphics. This is also around the time we first start seeing first-person shooters, such as Wolfenstein 3D and Doom, giving birth to the genre that would come to dominate the market. But eventually, systems will be able to run fully 3D games, 
such as Ridge Racer in 1993 and Super Mario 64 in 1996. We also get some more iconic costume design from this era, such as Laura Croft or basically anybody from Final Fantasy VII. While the amount of detail is still limited, it does make for some memorable costumes that are still cosplayed to this day. I just love the ones that try to keep the polygonal shapes. But as fully 3D games evolved and grew, and graphics got better and better, more detailed both costumes and characters were able to get, until there were virtually no limits to what the designers could come up with. The only limit is their imagination. Alright, so this video is getting really long, so I decided to turn it into two parts. Stay tuned for part two, where we look at more recent games and see how historically accurate their costumes are. Hope to see you there. Till then, thanks for watching and see you next time.